Good evening, dear women, tzadikot. Let's bless Bezrat Hashem, Shagi HaMashiach, Tzidkenu B'mera B'yameinu, Amen. Shagi HaMevaser, Eliyahu HaNavi, Eliyahu Tishbi, Eliyahu Gledi, Merav Mishach Ben David, Eliyahu HaNavi, Zachur Latov. We will start first, first of all, this Shabbat is Shabbat Chazon. We start Chumash Dvarim, the first portion of Chumash Dvarim, which is Parashat Dvarim, the portion of Dvarim. We are still in between the three weeks, between the 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Av. Please pay attention. It's important. And I would like to start with the Jewish laws for this week. This is different from every year because we start the fast before Shabbat goes out. Usually we have a week of Tisha B'Av that is called the week of Tisha B'Av. This year we do not have a week that is called the week of Tisha B'Av because it falls Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av is Shabbat. And we fast on Yud Be'Av, which means on the 10th of Av, we start before Shabbat goes out and, it, and until Bezrat Hashem, the night of the Sunday. It's approximately 9.06 p.m. approximately. And we start the fast at 8, yes, 8, 11 by the... By the calendar of Chabad, I have the calendar of Chabad, it's 8.11 p.m. on Shabbat. Okay, then we start. It's before Shabbat goes out, dear women. But first of all, so what happens with Lechabes? In order to wash, to wash the clothing this week, because you know that usually we do not, on the week of Tisha B'Av, we do not wash the clothing. So it says, Be'alkut Yosef, Rav Ovadia Yosef, it says like this, Kshechal Tisha Be'av Be'Shabbat, when Tisha Be'av occurs on Shabbat, Venitcha Ta'anit Le'yom Rishon, and the fast is postponed to Sunday, dear women, Mutar Lechabes Abgadim Bechol HaYemei HaShavua Shelifnei Tisha Be'av, which means this week you're allowed to do laundry. Listen, Vechen Lilvosh Bgadim Mechubasim, and you're allowed to wear the clothes after you wash them. Ashkenazim na'agu la'achmir belavachi sholo lechabes mirosh chodesh av v'yesh me'edot ha'mizrach shenagu gam ken la'achmir which means the Ashkenazi people usually they do not wash their clothing from the first day of av for all nine days. So all of those people who do that and this is their custom they are not allowed to wash because this is a custom in Hagut Kmo Torah. It's like a Torah. But for the Sephardic people who do not have this custom and they only do not wash on the week of Tisha B'Av, they are allowed to wash the clothing to do laundry this week and to wear the clothing after that. Oh, the palm and the Ken, why? Shh. Please listen. I want, I want to say, I don't, I don't want to repeat everything ten times. I want to tell you and everybody will understand. Please listen. It says, B'masechet Ta'anit, in the Gemara Masechet Ta'anit, Daf Chavav, page 26, it says, Shaninu, Shabbat Shechal Tisha Be'av, Liyot Betocha, which means the Shabbat, that Tisha Be'av is in, during that, uh, that week, it says, Asurim milesaper umelechabes. You are not allowed to cut your hair or to wash your clothing. Klomar, what is a Shabbat, what is a, uh, a, a week that um, Tisha B'Av is inside that week? Klomar, Shavua Shechal Tisha B'Av betocho. So it's a week that Tisha B'Av occurs inside that week. It means, Kegon, Ledugma, for example, Tanmichu Ta'at Selim, Shechachti Levakish. For example, if Tisha B'Av falls on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, do you understand? This is called the week of Tisha B'Av. This, this year we do not have it. Do you understand? We do not have it this year. This year there's something astonishing that happens this year. Be'ezrat Hashem Be'siyat Adishmaya. Even the 17th of Tammuz, look, what is 17th? 17, Yudzayin Tammuz, Tammuz, I told you it's Tov, Nachon, but it fell also on Shabbat. You remember? So the fast was not on the 17th, it was on the 18th, it was on Chai. Look, it was on Chai this year. And this year, instead of Tet Be'av, it's on Yud Be'av, the 10th of Av. 
And the tenth of Av, it's really what Chazal wanted at the beginning, that the fast, the, uh, the uh, Rabbanim, our sages, they used to fast two days, the ninth and the tenth, because on the ninth, the, the fire only started, but most of the tenth exactly was the fire. Do you understand? And so this year we have the, the Tzom Mamash on the tenth of Av. So it says like this, uh, so we know now that th we don't have this year a week that Isha B'Av is inside it. So, you, so again, because of that, if it's not your custom, if you're Ashkenazi and the custom is that you're not washing and doing laundry from Aleph, from the first day of Av, you're not allowed to do the laundry. Mm -hmm. And if you have this custom, if you're sporadic, you're not allowed to do the laundry and you're not allowed to wear laundry uh, clothing. You understand? Unless you do what I told you to do, you remember? You dress, you wear it before, but anyway, we're not, we are now inside the month of Av. We are already in, on the, this is the eve of the 5th of Av. Mm -hmm. And there's another thing that you can do that I told you last time, that from the Ben Ishchai. And the, all of these are laws of mourning. Everybody that was, any one of us that mourned their parents or other God forbid people, they know those are customs of mourning. So even if you, you have, you're not allowed to wear a laundry a clothing, Rabbi Chai says, Rabbi Chaim Yosef, he says this, if you, you don't have clothing and you have to, to, to wear something that you already uh, washed and cleaned, he says you can put it on the floor and with your feet you can just you know, walk on it and it's like it wasn't laundered before and you can wear it. Okay, Zema Ben Ishchai. And it says also in the Yerushalmi, Masechet Ha'anit, it says like this, Amar Rabbi Abihu, Abahu, Tisha Be'av, Shechal Liyot Be'Shabbat, which means, uh, Rabbi Abahu said that Tisha Be'av, the ninth of Av, that is on Shabbat, that uh, is, uh, no, uh, falls on Shabbat, it says, Shtei Ha'Shabbatot Mutarot, which means both of the Shabbatot are allowed to do laundry, dear women. Ben b'shavua shel fanav uben b'shavua shel acharav mutamrim liistaper ulechabes. Both of them, even this is from the Yerushalmi betani, even they are allowed to have a, 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 a haircut and to do the laundry, dear women. It says in Maran Shulchan Aruch, Maran Shulchan Aruch says, Im chal tisha be'av. Be'av b'shabbat, ben itcha l'achad b'shabbat, echad b'shabbat is the, the Sunday. If the tisha be'av falls on Shabbat and it is postponed to uh, the oh. Sunday, it says, this is from Maran Shulchan Aruch. Rabbi Yosef Karol, Shudrot Agen Alenu. Mutar b'shte ha-shabbatot. בשתי השבתות, גם בשבת הזאת, שכבר זה כבר אב, זה חודש אב, וגם השבת שלפני זה. שתי השבתות מותרות. בכביסה, because there are people... אבל בשבתות, means that we have to do, we can do it on שבת? לא. It means during the weekdays, not the שבת, but you prefer it, because you go to, you call the days by שבת, אחד בשבת, שניים בשבת, שלושה בשבת, מבינה? You call the days... By Shabbat, okay? Shabbat, no Shabbat, it's Shabbat. Okay, Bidiuk. That's why they're calling it. For example, if a rabbi wanted to write something, for example, if he wanted a, a, a reference for someone, you know how they used to write it, our sages? They won't write like with today you write, okay, the, the date. Today we write the English date. And I'm not talking about writing the Hebrew date. They used to write... They used to write that it, it was, a, let's say, this Shabbat is Shabbat Varim, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the Shlishi Le Shabbat Varim, which means it's the third day before Shabbat Varim, you understand? Mm -hmm. And the year, that's the, how they used to write it, dear women. We do not do it, so that's why we cannot understand. That's why sometimes things are very weird to us, because we do not understand the language, the way they used to speak. Okay, so again, you're allowed. And it's written over here, ואף על פי שאנחנו, כתוב האשכנזים, זה לפי, בספר שולחן גבוה, שרשם הגאון רבי יוסף מלקו, מולקו. And he's Ashkenazi and he wrote this, אף על פי שאנחנו אשכנזים, היוצאים ביד רמה, which means that הרמה, רמה, you know, he wrote הגאות לשולחן ערוך, 
היא סז אובר דיס, נהגו להחמיר שלא לכבס מראש חודש, והוא הדין שלא לבלוש בגדים מכובסים, which means the Ashkenazi, they do not wash, do the laundry during the nine days, okay? So it does not refer to them. But all the Sephardic people who do not have this custom, because some do have the custom, they're allowed by Shulchan Aruch, ובי... ובי ילקוט יוסף וכולי, כן לשטוף את הבגדים, which is very important to know that. אוקיי, let's continue. ברית מילה וכן פדיון הבן שחל בערב תשעה באב, which means if we have a ברית או פדיון הבן בערב תשעה באב, או סין הסעודה, קודם חצות היום, before noon of the day, there's a סעודה, before noon of day, או בתשעה באב. I would like to continue just a minute the things that we need them. Uh, what happened first on Tisha B'Av? Dear women, you remember that the spies on Tisha B'Av, they came back, the 12 spies that went to the land of Israel to see the good of the land of Israel, they came back on the eve of Tisha B'Av and they caused all of the tribes to cry. God said, because all of you cried in vain, God said, you're going to cry for generations, God forbid, until today. You're going to cry for this for generations. Because of that, the two temples was ruined. Because of that, we had pogrom, pogromim. Because of that, we had the exile of Spain. Uh, uh, the exile of Spain. Because of that, we had a lot of trouble. Because of that, we had the Holocaust. And because, why? Dear women, you know, Arav Arush says this. He says, I cannot understand, he, he writes it in one of his books, he says, I cannot understand how come Hashem punished the Jewish people for crying in vain. They did not, they did not worship another god, they did not kill anyone, they did not uh, have intimate relationships that were, not, uh, that were forbidden. Shh, listen, it's important. So he says, how come this punishment is so harsh because they cried, they did, so they, they cried, so what? So they cried. So how could the Hashem... Until today we are punished. This is part of the punishment. So how come, he says, how come the children of Israel are punished so harshly until today? For crying. Not for worshipping idols. Not for killing people. Only for crying. Look what a harsh... Even al Egel we did not... Even when we did the golden cloth, we were not punished like this. Only for crying in vain. And you know why? Because God says, if a person does not know how to say thank you for the things that I gave him, he says, I have to teach him how to do that. Because it means that he has it, the fathers of impurity, the father of fathers of impurity, which means it's the, the measure of pride because he thinks that he, everybody, everybody owes him something. He is, uh, with a merit, everybody has to give him everything. He does not even think to say, thank you, God, for making me, uh, for that I walk in the morning, that I can walk, that I can do things, that I can work, I have children. And instead of that, he starts to cry about the half glass that is empty. Instead of doing his fixing in this world, he sits and cries. And this depression and sadness, God does not like. And if a person cries out of depression and sadness of his situation, instead of looking around himself and seeing all the good things that God provided for him and gave him, and saying thank you, this is a punishment for generations. And until now, we did not learn anything. Because until, otherwise Mashiach was already here. Until now, we just let we'll be true. Cry. We will be true to ourselves. How if something doesn't go well in, the, in, in our job, we get depressed, we have problems, we think, wow, it's the end of the world. Instead of saying, thank you, God, you know what you're doing. If this is what you wanted for me, it's only for the best. Instead of that, we still complain. And for complaining in vain and for crying in vain, the punishment is for generations. So, dear women, we have to change ourselves. We, you know, from today... Every day, shh, listen very carefully, from today, we should do every day, every minute that we remember, we should say thank you to Hashem. Mm -hmm. Every day, until Tisha B'Av, don't forget to say thank you to Hashem. Everything that we do. Look, you know what? It says that before the temple was ruined, shh, 
before the temple was ruined. It says in the Midrash that they were in the sky, dear women, in the sky, mamash, when the, the, before the fire started, and everything in the sky, there were angels with uh, carriages of fire. There were horses of fire. Everybody saw it in the sky. Today they will say it's aliens. They want, but I want to tell you, Rabbi Mordechai Sharabi, Allah Shalom, he says there's no aliens. Everything is what God created. These are angels or demons, what a person sees. They, and, and you know what? This time now that we are now in this year, 5,772 dear women, that, and this, this is called the army of Hashem. This is the army of Hashem. It is already Tzva Hashem, the army of Hashem, all his angels. All the, what we see in the world, either he cannot... I need to separate you, everybody who needs to come here. <laughs> dear women, what we see, what we see in the world, the... the, the um, the falling of e economy, the, politi po uh, the um, political uh, situation that we have, the social situation that we have, and all the, the falling of uh, governments in countries, everything that we see, the army and all what happens with nature, the army of Hashem is already here. It, we need to be blind in order not to see that. It's already here. Now we need to have the merit to be, to be saved, us and all the world. So if we will be wise, let's say thank you to Hashem. From today, then we will take upon ourselves the whole day. When you remember, oh, I didn't say thank you to Hashem. Now, say thank you to Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, and find for what you need to say thank you. That I can eat, thank you, that you provided food for me. Thank you, everything that you see in front of you. Just say thank you with all of your heart, dear women. We say, I say every day that Hodayala uh, Hashem. Uh, Yishar Koch, and it does every minute of the day that you have. And you remember, shh, Sigi, and you remember, Bezrat Hashem, say thank you to Hashem. Let's continue. The second thing that happened is the ruining of the temple, the first and the second, on the ninth of Av. Another thing is the city of Beitar was also ruined on Tisha Be'av. And, uh, and also the city, the, the city of Jerusalem was Nechresha. Uh, how do you say Nechresha by English? Plowed. plowed. Was plowed like a field on Tisha Be'av. Dear women, all of these things happened because... We cried in vain, only because of that. Why? Because Hashem says, if a person, God forbid, makes a sin like worships another idol, or kills someone, or even has intimate relationships that are forbidden, dear women, God says, well, it's his evil inclination that caused him to, to fall. You know, it's a falling, and Bezrat Hashem, maybe he will, do, he will fix himself. But crying, so, but be, being ungrateful, this is a mamashka part of your soul, it's a characteristic that we have to get rid of. This is, and we do that all the time. Sometimes we don't even say thank you to a messenger, a person who does good things to us. We don't even remember his good things that he did, we, he did to us. Once we do not remember the messenger that came towards us, we do not remember Hashem because Hashem sent him. No one does anything on his own. Because there's no person who will do something here without God announcing it in heaven. Do you understand? So everything that happens, even the, bad, the good and the bad things come from Hashem. We should say thank you because we do not see the whole picture. You see us like this? Imagine an artist. He sits down and he makes a beautiful painting. And he paints all of us around the table now. And we are inside the picture. So think of us like we are inside the picture. The artist who is outside, he sees all the details. But we are inside the picture. We do not see all the details. We just see one another. And you understand? Only around us we do, cannot see the whole picture. It's the same thing, dear women. So we have to remember, we have to be grateful to Hashem. It's Aleph Bet, it's the ABC. All of us, all the nations, everybody. In the image of Hashem, He created the human being. You understand? Every human being. It's not only the children of Israel. The whole world God created in His image. The children of Israel are His firstborns. The daughters and the sons of a king, which means all of our 
Honor is from inside. We need to appreciate our, our soul that we received from Hashem. That's why I told you last lesson, it says, the Arizal says, and generations before us, they knew exactly what they had to fix. Today we do not know. So the Arizal says, he says, we need to fix the things that are hard for us. Dear women, when the woman was created, God chose to create her from the ribs. And when he created her, he said, Be modest, be modest. It's part of our nature to be modest, dear women. When we do not do that, dear women, we go against our nature. When we come to heaven, the first question that they will ask the women there, Were you modest? Listen very carefully because we were created like this. God is going to ask us, Were you modest in this world? So please, one of the things that brings Mashiach is modesty. It's not only modesty with clothing, external clothing, but modesty with a mouth, modesty with, with handling ourselves. You understand? This, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole image of modesty. Everything is part of us, but I won't, give it, I won't go into it now because I have something else to give you today. So let's continue. Uh, I want to remind you that the fast of Tisha B'Av is just like Yom Kippurim, okay? Exactly like Yom Kippurim. You are not allowed to eat, to drink, you are not allowed to bath yourself, you are not allowed to put oil, you know, creme on your body, and you are not allowed to um, wear sandals that are from leather, shoes from leather. <laughs> Remember that. Achshav, um, it says even, Yesh l'adam l'itzter, shh. At the night, when Tisha B'Av goes, comes in, you'll see that people go to the shul. You see over here, they sit on low benches, exactly like morning, exactly like your father and mother passed away. It's the same thing. And they sit on a low bench. And dear women, they read Megillat Eicha that Yirmiyahu the prophet wrote because Yirmiyahu was the one who gave the prophecy that the first temple will be ruined. And, Nebu and Nebuchadnezzar said... <coughs> the, wait. I want all of you to listen. That's like, it's hard for me to raise my voice. <laughs> and Nebuchadnezzar, Nebu the king of Babylon, which is the king of um, Iraq of today, he told Nebuzaradan, his general, not to touch Yirmiyahu, not to, to do any, any harm to him because this was his prophecy. And he became the king also of Jerusalem. So he said, do not touch him, do not harm him, otherwise I will kill you, he told, he told his general. And Yirmiyahu writes Megillat Eicha. He warned the children of Israel and they did not want to listen, dear women. I'll tell you what's the problem. Today we can see we are going into something big in the world and it's going to happen any minute we are mamash at the entrance nobody even a blind person can feel everything around him we are at the entrance and people say well olam kemina egg like the, the world is uh, behaves like every day because we wake up in the morning we go to work it seems for us that everything continues as usual but it's not as usual Look what happens with the laws that are going, passing through in Europe. Look how in Switzerland there's a shchita surah, slaughtering, a kosher slaughtering is forbidden. Look how in Germany they are forbidding a circumcision. And look, start, look what's happening. We are at the entrance of a new period in the world. Mamash at the beginning. So we shouldn't be apatim, we shouldn't be apathic and, and think, oh, nothing will happen. Dear women, this is the time of tshuva. There's no other time. If you have the merit, you'll be part of it. If you don't have the merit, God forbid, Maikre. We are mamash, we are standing in front of it. The mamash. We have the Baruch Hashem, dear women, we are standing in, inside it. Now I would like to continue. During the, the fast, shh, the fast starts before Shabbat goes out. Shabbat goes out, I think, 9.06 approximately. Shabbat. Uh, and Motzei Shabbat is 9.06, if I remember correctly. And the fast starts at 11, at 8, 11 p.m. Dear women, uh, during the night, it says, Yesh l'adam l'itztair b'inyan mishkavo, which means 
a, a person should be to should feel sorry also when he lies down and sleeps. So if you, for example, there are people who take stones under their pillow and put them. But if you usually, what you can do is, if you usually sleep on two pillows, sleep on one pillow. You understand? It just, yes, it's to symbolize that you are mourning over Jerusalem. Over the, the ruining of the temple, the mourning itself. You understand? Okay, and it says over here, uh, the in shacharit, dear women, in shacharit, you, the men do not put fill in. Sunday morning, the men do not rem remind your children, your sons and your husbands. They do not put fill in, they put it in mincha. Because we are mourning, betalit nikra pe'er. It means like uh, it's glory of Hashem. So dear women, they do not put fill in. They do, uh, they do not put fill in velot alit gdola because it's a, a, an act of mourning. And only on Mincha, when they go to the synagogue, then they, they take with them that fill in, they put that fill in. They Ashkenazi, they do the same? Everybody does it. Everybody does it. If, the Ben Ishchai says, I wrote a note for myself, because I spoke with uh, Rabbi Yarei Gamliel, and the Ben Ishchai says, shh, the Ben Ishchai says that if a person wants to put a fill in, he's allowed to put it at home, bet sin I, in modesty, not next to anyone, just say the blessing and Shema. And he can go to the shul without that feeling. But I'm telling you, this is what the Ben Ishchai says. And then he does, does it all over without the bracha on, uh, in Mincha, dear women. Well, why he says uh, different than the... It's not different. Because the, uh, the Ben Ishchai says that even though we are in mourning, that feeling is not something of peer. It's a necessi necessity. You understand? It's, it depends on the way that you uh, interpret this. Okay, Beshacharit en menichin tfilin. Mishum de tfilin ikrain per. Again, and you do not wear talit gadol. So remind your husband because you know, because they are used to, they will go out, remind them not talit velot tfilin. Beshacharit, only on mincha they have to go with that. Bezrat Hashem. Ela lovshim talit katan belo bracha. Only the talit katan with the tzitziot, they, they put the tzitzit without bracha, without a blessing, dear women. I want to remind you, dear women, that on, in the morning and at night, which means Motzei Shabbat, we read Megillat Eicha and we say Kinot, mourning over the ruining of the temple. And then, and then on Sunday morning, we also read Megillat Eicha and Kinot, the mourning over the temple. Dear women, not everybody goes to the shul. You can read it at home. Open Megillat Eicha even translate it and read it. Yes, it's in the Chumash. Yes, it's in the Gilat Eicha. If you have a Chumash, you have the Gilat Eicha, you can read it at home, dear women. Pay attention to the words that you say. Motzei Shabbat. Motzei Shabbat, we read, we go to the shul. Well, you can read it at home also. The men go to the shul and they read Megillat Echa together. Ma'kinot, ze kol mine mizmor, ze lo mizmor shel dvarim, ze omrim, ma? Yes, yes, chovrot shel kinot le tisha be'av. There are booklets of kinot le tisha be'av that our sages wrote crying on the, on the ruining of the temple, dear women. So you can read Megillat Echa, but um, you just check at home and ask the rabbis, you will find a go to a, a Jewish store and they have Kinot Le... Oh, le yes, can, you can read it. Kinot Le Tisha Be'av, dear women. Now I would like to remind you, when you say Shh, when you say Birkot HaShachar, Shh, Birkot HaShachar, when you say Birkot HaShachar on Sunday, you do not say Shasali Kol Tzorki. You do not say Shasali Kol Tzorki because there are two reasons. First, the first reason because you are not wearing leather shoes. Because Shasali Kol Tzorki is for the leather shoes that we are wearing. That God provides for us. Even to, to see that our feet will not be damaged. And the second thing is Shasali Kol Tzorki that gave me everything that I need. We don't have the temple. We do not have the third temple, so we do not say Shasali called Sorkish. Another thing, we do not read Pitom Aktoret. You do not read just like mourning. People who mourn their parents or other, other people, you are not, you're not reading Pitom Aktoret. 
And then you're not reading in the morning Shiro Shal Yom, dear women, okay? Shiro, uh, the, the song that the Levine Ay, used to say every day in the yeah, temple, you do not read it. Okay, another thing, you are not allowed during Tisha B'Av. Lea, Lea, boi tishbi ladi neshama. Boi, boi, ani rotsa otach ladi. Ani chaset shachhi tov shvi. <laughs> ah, beseder. <laughs> okay, dear women, another thing. It's written, Divrei Torah mesamchin et alev. Studying Torah makes you happy. So you are not allowed to study Torah on Tisha B'Av. The only thing, you are not allowed to read Tehillim. Only <laughs> chapter 137, which is Al Narod Bevelia Sham Sham Nudam Bachinu. That we, Yom Rishon, Mi Yom, Mi Motzei Shabbat, from Motzei Shabbat. Until, until the end, Ken. Dear women, you're not, you do not study Torah or read Tehillim. Only one chapter you can read in Tehillim. 137. That we were sitting on the rivers of Babylon and we were crying over the ruining of the temple. This is one chapter, it's 137. Okay, Kuf Lamed Zayim. That's Ken Zayim, Betilim Zerak Zeh. You can read about Iyov, You can read about Iyov, the book of Iyov, you can read, dear women. Sefer Iyov, Zeh Betoch HaTanach. Sefer Iyov, you're allowed to read. You're allowed to read also from Yirmiyahu and other prophets only the chapters that are about the ruining of the temple. Okay? Kol Nevuot Azam, only the chapters of the rage of Hashem over the children of Israel. What about eating meat? No, 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 no. The whole week we do not eat meat, chicken, and drink wine. I said that last week. You are not, we are not allowed. Why we do not eat it? We do not, sh we do not do that because they couldn't, there was a, a siege, siege. No? siege over the city of Jerusalem, over the, over the temple, and because of that, dear women, just a minute, honey, and because of that, dear women, they, they couldn't bring animals to, to put, uh, to slaughter on the altar, so we do, uh, and we are participating, we do not eat meat or chicken, and the wine, lenasech ala mizbeach, that they used to put to the, uh, over on the altar, they couldn't do that, so we are not drinking. The Shabbat can. The Shabbat, Shabbat and Bavilut. On Shabbat we have no morning, which means you have to eat meat, chicken, uh, fish, everything to drink the wine because it's Shabbat. Shabbat does not. Shabbat is parallel to Elif Hashvit. It's parallel to the times that Mashiach is already here. Mama, Shabbat is Elif Hashvit. Zeh Shabbat. Shabbat mutar likro tehilim. You are allowed to read tehilim until until Tisha B'Av is goes comes in. Ah, ad yatzum. Ani agid akol od meat b'shlavim. Ad yom b'yom rishon. Akol. Ma? Yom rishon tehilim b'avokir. Ken. Dear women, Ken. The I'm going to read together. Are we going to read on Sunday or not? No, no. We're all missing Okay. Dear women, shh. Tomorrow we cannot eat. Can. אני אגיד, אני אגיד, לא הגעתי לזה. בכל הבתי כנסיות, כאן עד שעה שתיים לא הולכים לבתי קברות, את אומרת? הולכים, 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 הולכים פה גם פה. אני חושבת שגם כאן הולכים, אין שום בעיה, כן. כן. Dear women, ששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששש
Ask only that God will save us and bring Mashiach now. Okay, shh. Listen very carefully. Shh. It says also that Rechitza um, Asura Ben Bechamim, of course, you're not allowed to have a shower or something, even if it's in cold or hot water. Nothing, I already said that at the beginning. But when you wake, when you do, after Asher Yatsar, when you went, shh, when you went to the toilet, or in the morning when you woke up and you do, need to do Netirat Yadayim to take the bad spirit from your fingers, you are allowed to put the water only up till here. You see, Pirkets Baot, Atsof Pirkets Baot. You do not put it up till here, the water. Only here, Pirkets, just like Yom Kippur, Pirkets Baot, dear women. Only here, also when you, before you say Asher Yatsar, you also do the netila only here, dear women, perkets baot, lo yoter mizeh. And also the morning when you wake up and you do netilat yadayim, only at perkets baot, because the bad spirit is here. Okay? So you only at perkets baot, lo yoter mizeh, dear women. Achshav, devar nosaf, nere. Can I ask you? Yes. What about cooking? What time we're allowed to start? I'll say everything. Wait, I'll just say thing by thing by order. Nashim ha-mevashlot u-tzrukhot la-diyach ma-achalim, which means women that have, shh, women who have little children at home, okay, and they prepare food for the children, and they have to, to wash, they're allowed to wash because it's not for pleasure, it's a must. So they're allowed to wash. And another thing, um, רק שנייה. סיכה, I told you that היא אסורה. נעילה סנדל. Another thing, it's very important. Of course, you know, like Yom Kippur, that you're not allowed to have intimate relationship. Even if your day to go to the mikveh is the Motzei Shabbat, you do not go to the mikveh. You're allowed to wash before that, okay, to prepare yourself, prepare on Friday. And you're not allowed, and, and it says, Chazal say even it's better to wait to the day after. But this time, the Yotse, it's, it's always, already the 11th of Av, it's not the 10th, because usually when we fast, it's the 10th of Av after that. So it, and it's still the burning of the temple. So Hasidim, it says, he who is Chared Lidvar Hashem, he who is afraid or has the fear of Hashem, waits another day. But dear women, if it's your time to go to the mikveh, you're allowed only b'motzei tisha be'av, okay? Arak sh'yotzei tisha be'av. Not before that. And another thing, dear women, you're not allowed to say hello to each other just like morning, okay? You're not greeting each other with hello or sending present or anything during tisha be'av. You're not allowed to say, sh'asur lish'ol bishlom chavero. You're not allowed to ask, sh'asur. Shalom. Even uh, good morning, it, it says. Okay. Dear women, if a, if a person who does not know, he's Jewish, but he does not know the laws at all, or by mistake he asked you, or even a non or even a non-Jewish person asked you, it says here, Mashiv Besafarafad, allow in a low voice answer back in order not to hurt him or to cause any hatred, uh, uh, false hatred. To the boy, also we cannot say hello? You ask Besafarafad, in a low voice, say hello and that's oh, it, okay? In order not to cause hatred. Yeah, right. Now, regarding work, shh. Binyan Melachayf, we have work, and to the, this, this year there's no problem because it falls on Sunday. Okay? So if a person has work, it says, Asurin, every work is forbidden from the night of Tisha B'Av until noon the next day. From the eve of Tisha B'Av until noon the next day. Why? Because those days, this time we read the Kinot, we read Megillat Eicha. We are mourning over the ruining of the temple. Why we are allowed afternoon? Because shh, it's important. Mashiach was born as Kabbalah Mipelaozen, which means our sages sent us from, uh, from generation to generation. Mashiach is born on the afternoon of Tisha B'Av. It's Vimamash Ken. Mashiach is born then. That's why we say then Nachamu. Because after the afternoon of Tisha B'Av, God said, 
the, Satan does not think even that the uh, salvation, the, the, the person who will save the, the Jewish people and the whole world will be born just on the day of the ruining of the temples. So God, I always told you, a big soul comes from the darkness into the light. So nobody can prosecute it and not give it, to, and, and, not give the, and it will be a problem to take out the soul into the light of the world. So dear women, Mashiach is born from afternoon. So that's why then we can say Nachamu, dear women. So means that the Mashiach is here from the... Mashiach is already here. From, the, from, 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 uh, listen very carefully. Mashiach is all... He just does not know himself that he is Mashiach. Yeah. Dear women, every generation, every year we have... Shh, let me answer. Every name. I want to know. Every. Shh. Mashiach himself does not. I know it's it's very exciting, but I did, I won't, you're not going up today from here until I finish today. I won't let you go today. Listen very carefully. Let me finish with the Jewish law so I can go into what I wanted to tell you. Mashiach. Every year, every generation, we have Mashiach. Mashiach himself. Mashiach himself. No, I'm not mitrakshot. Mashiach himself does not know that he is Mashiach. Like Moshe Rabbeinu did not know that he was Mashiach until God spoke with him through the snare. He did not even know that he's going to be the, the savior of the children of Israel and take them out out of the Egypt. He did not know that. Until God was, called him and spoke to him from the snap, from the burning bush. Yes. Mashiach does not know that he's Mashiach. He's walking among the children of Israel in Israel. But he still does not know that he's Mashiach. This year we're going to give him the merit. Dear women, it's our effort. Because of righteous women we went out of Egypt. And because of us we're going to go out of this exile. So Bezrat Hashem, I told you from now we are saying thank you to Hashem for everything. No complaining, no complaining about anything. Just asking from Hashem. Shh. It's written in Tehillim, Lolanu, Lolanu, it says. Shh. God, not for us, do it for yourself. Kileshimcha Gadol, we say. Only for your sake, for your name. Listen, dear women, this is what we have to ask now. Not for us, but for your sake. So this is what we have to ask. But you said that uh, Mashiach is born beyom tishabah. And Shamash lo nolda be tishabah. Nolda. So means uh, so from. Gam Ashanai is she kvar nimtza. Will born. Ze kvar achar kach kodem shegi Mashiach. But he, he was born or not born? He was, he was already, every Tisha B'Av, Mashiach is born. We have already Mashiach. He's here, but he does not know that he's Mashiach. So it means that from 2,000 years ago he is born. Okay, dear women, let's continue. I want to make a... Let's continue. Okay, what did I tell you until now? Um, oh, I spoke about uh, melacha, about work. So I gave you this. And, okay, let's continue about what happens this Shabbat. Dinei Tisha Be'av, Shechal Be'Shabbat, or Echad Be'Shabbat. This year, Tisha Be'av is on Shabbat. And the fast, it starts before Motzei Shabbat and continues till, sun, till the end of Sunday. So, it says over here, Tisha B'Av, Shechal B'Echad B'Shabbat, or Shechal B'Shabbat, V'Nitcha L'Echad B'Shabbat, Ochlin B'Shabbat, Basar V'Shotim Yain. Because I told you there's no customs of mourning on Shabbat. So we eat basar, we eat meat, we eat chicken, and we drink wine on Shabbat. ואפילו בסעודה שלישית, even in סעודה שלישית. Now, סעודה שלישית היא סעודה מפסקת. Do you understand? What is מפסקת? The, the, the סעודה before the fast. The סעודה מפסקת is the סעודה before, like we have on יום כיפור. כן, כן, because the שבת. Dear women, like we have before יום כיפור, we eat a meal, it's the same thing. ואפילו בסעודה שלישית, שלאחר מנחה, that we eat after מנחה, מותר בכל. 
אך לא יושב אז בסעודת חברים. Dear women, another thing, uh, in Mincha, the women that daven, we do not say Tzidkatcha Tzedek. You know in Mincha we say Tzidkatcha Tzedek, we do not say it this, uh, this Mincha, this Shabbat, Mincha Shal Shabbat, we do not say that, okay? The women that do do that, and the men, I'm sure the rabbis will tell them. Another thing, okay, uh, it's written, before, when it becomes dark, כשהוא רואה את הנר, מברך בורא מאורי האש, which means this is במוצאי שבת. אבל אין מבדילין על כוס עד מוצאי תשעה באב. We do not say הבדלה over the wine until... We do not say הבדלה over the wine. We do not say הבדלה over the wine until תשעה באב goes out. We do not say בורא מורה, בסמים. We do not say יצא בסמים because Sunday we do not have נשמה יתרה. Because we do not say the הבדלה, so Sunday we do the הבדלה with the wine, but we cannot say יצא בסמים מאחר ואין נשמה יתרה. יצא בסמים is in form of נשמה יתרה. כן, we say ש... ואז הוא מבדיל על כוס, אבל אינו מברך לא על הפסמים ולא על הנר. Also, the candle we do not say when we have, מוצא, בהבדלה, במוצאי תשעה באב, we do not say the blessing over the בסמים and not over the candle too. <laughs> אפילו לא, yes, we, because we say over the candle for a candle for מוצאי, for uh, תשעה באב, for the ninth of Ab, we say that במוצאי שבת. <laughs> so that's why we do not say the candle and not the פסמים. אוקיי? Okay, ויזהר, ויזהיר לבני ביתו שלא יעשו מלאכה עד שאמרו המבדיל בין קודש לחול, בלא שאין הוא מלכות. Which means, if we want to light that lights, אוקיי? Okay, don't, don't forget, even though the first came in, we just say, המבדיל בין קודש לחול, without saying שם במלכות. <laughs> ברוך המבדיל בין קודש לחול, that's what we say. Without using a שם אלוקינו, אלא we say, ברוך המבדיל בין קודש לחול. Why? Because we're going to say that מוצאי תשעה באב. אוקיי? Okay? But I'm sure also the rabbis will tell uh, your husband, Bezrat Hashem. Another thing, let's see. Uh, I think I said everything. Yes. I want to ask you about Mashiach being born. Because, it, because the mental hospitals are full of people who think that they're Jesus Christ. They, they put them in they put them I want to will ask me after that, okay? Because it's all already and I want to give something, okay? Yes. No. No. Again, you do not say no because we, we are already fasting. Betach shelo. I just told you. No. At Romim Baruch, Amavdil ben Kodesh lechol. Okay. We do bless. Amavdil ben Shh. Banot. I know you are asking about it. Let me explain again. We do not say. We just say Mavdil ben Kodesh lechol, and we bless over the candle, because we light a candle in the synagogue for Tisha B'Av, because the lights should be very, you know, the lights should be low, dim, okay? Because it's morning. We are anachnu avelim over the ruining of the temple that was not built yet. Madlikim ner bebet haknesed ner katan. מדליקים בבית הכנסת, לא צריך להדליק נר בבית, אבל מדליקים נר בבית הכנסת קטן. Now dear women, במוצאי, at the end of תשעה באב, לבריאות, then we say, המבדיל בין קודש לחול, עם שם ומלכות, המבדיל בין קודש לחול, and we bless over the wine, that's it. No בסמים, okay? We do not say בסמים. That's, that's what we do, two blessings. Okay, let's continue. Now I would like to continue Shh. on Sunday night when Tisha B'Av goes Shh. and now I would like to continue I would like to have all of your attention I would like to say something the second the first temple was ruined Shh. and 70 years the children of Israel were exiled from the land of Israel the second temple was ruined 1,944 years the children of Israel are exiled from the land of Israel. 
Okay, we are still in exile. Well, not all of us in the land of Israel. And even though we are in the land of Israel, you see how many people are fighting over the land of Israel. God says, before the children of Israel, when Yoshua took the place of Moshe Rabbeinu, he said, God said, if you will not listen to my laws and you will not do what I tell you to do, the nations are going to bother you. If you do not remember who you are, the nations will remind you. If you want to be like the nations, like a non-Jew, they will remind you that you are Jewish. And we have remindings all over history, including the Holocaust, all over history. They reminded us that we are Jews. Even if, God forbid, we got married with non-Jewish people, God forbid, they, they looked back in order to remind us that we are Jewish. Listen very carefully, the owner of this world, the one that created this world, Melech Malchem Lachim, the king of kings, the Kadosh Baruch Hu, he wrote, he saw to it that all of the Tanakh, all of the Torah, all of the Torah was written, you feel well? All of the Torah was written, shh, and this is a book that tells us exactly how to behave and what happens if we do not listen to him. To Hashem. Listen very carefully. Nothing changed. We just think that things change. Nothing changed. Every day we do the Brit. The Brit is the treaty with Hashem. Every day we say that again. In the morning, Shema Yisrael. At night, Shema Yisrael. And if you will listen to me. But if you won't listen, you're going to be punished. Every day we sign the treaty again and again, twice a day. So which means we are responsible for it. We cannot hide. We cannot find a place not to be, to say, no, I'm not part of it. Each and every one of us is part of it. We are one soul, dear women. We just look different, but we are sparkles of the same soul. And I would like to tell you, dear women, you know why the, first, the, the, why the second temple was ruined? It was ruined because of sinat chinam, false hatred. Mamash sinat chinam, dear women, how do we know that? We know that from Megillat Eicha. It says in Megillat Eicha, Eicha yashva badad ha'ir, how this city was sitting alone. The city that everybody came to it. It's Jerusalem. And if you look at the first letters of each word, you will see it adds up to the word Eva. Eva is hatred. Because of hatred, the city fell. Dear women, I would like to explain to you what it means. There's the story of Kamtsa Bar Kamtsa in the Gemara Masechet Gitin, Perak Nezikin, dear women. It's page 90, uh, 50, 55 and 56. I will tell you the story of Kamtsa Bar Kamtsa and then I want to go inside. I would, and then I would like to go inside what happened in Jerusalem. In what happened in the city of Jerusalem, and I would like everybody to look at me and to listen very carefully. There was a story of a person who did in Jerusalem a feast, and he invited a very important people, and a lot of rabbis. And it says that he had a friend that was called Kamsa, a very, a very good friend of his. And he had a, a person that did not like him, an enemy that was called Bar Kamsa. All of them are Jewish. So he sent a messenger to call Kamsa for the, to, for the feast. But the messenger was mistaken and he gave the invitation to Bar Kamsa. Bar Kamsa thought, wow, maybe he wants to make peace with me. So he came to the feast. He was sitting. The person that had the feast came towards him and said, what are you doing here? You are my blood enemy. You are my, you know, soul enemy. What are you doing here? So he said, Bar Kamsa told him, please don't make me embarrassed. I will pay for my meal. So he said, no, you're not allowed to stay. You have to go. He says, you know what? I will pay for half of this meal for everybody. He says, no, I do not allow you. You have to go out. He says, I will pay the whole meal. He says, no, you have to go out. So he took him by his hand and he took him out. And everybody saw that. He was so embarrassed. He said, if the wise people were sitting around the table... And they did not say anything. It means that they think the same thing. So he decided to go to Caesar. You know, every representative of the Roman Empire was called also Caesar. So he went to the representatives in Israel. 
And he told him, you know, the Jewish people went to slander the Jewish people. I want you to know that they're going to rebel against you. He says, who, who said that? He says, I will show you. He says, how? He says, bring a sacrifice to the temple and you will see that they won't put the sacrifice on the altar. So he gave him a cloth, but a good one without any damage to put it, to give it to the priests in the temple in order that they will sacrifice it on the altar. And Bar Kamsa, while he was walking, damaged the cloth. He, some say that he damaged by the upper lip and some say in the eye. A small thing that for the uh, non-Jewish people is not called a defect. But for us, we are not allowed to put it on the altar and sacrifice it. When he came with this, the Kohanim, the priest, said, what shall we do? We know that it's Bar Kamsa that did it. But we, uh, if we won't put, if we won't sacrifice it, they will come and kill the children of Israel. So they said, because of to make peace with the kingdom that is ruling now the, the land of Israel, we should sacrifice it. Schariah ben, Af ben Afkalus, which means Rabbi Schariah ben Afkalus, he said, you cannot do that. Because then everybody will think they do not know your reason why you are doing it. They will think that damaged, you know, uh, uh, an animal with defect is allowed to be sacrificed. So they said, okay, so if we are not allowed to do that because we do not want them to think that there's a new Jewish law, we are going to kill Bar Kamsa. Kam lor gechash, kem lor go. He who comes to kill you first, you should kill him first. So we will kill him. So Rabbi Zcharia ben Avkalu says, he says, Rabbi Zcharia, but if you'll do that, everybody thinks, will think that if you put damage on an animal, your, your sentence is to be killed. So they said, the Rabotenu said, because of him, because of Rabbi Zcharia, because of his tolerance to the behavior of Bar Kamsa, they said, the temple was ruined and we were exiled, and there was, the temple was ruined, the Jerusalem was ruined, the, there was fire in the temple, and all of the children of Israel were exiled. Because they did not sacrifice on the altar, the cloth that Caesar gave them, he, Caesar sent a general that was called Neron. And Neron was standing in front of the walls of Jerusalem. And he was sieging the walls and he wanted to see if God, everybody believed that the Jewish, that the God of the Jews is a strong God. And they wanted to know if God will give the city in his hands. So he took, and he was a great general, he took bow and arrow and he threw the arrow from four corners of the, of, uh, four corners of the world, he threw it towards, uh, to, to different places. He threw the arrow to the east, to the west to the south, to north, and the arrow just changed direction and went inside the city. So he knew that God wants him to conquer the city, the God of the Israelites. Dear women, shh. It says that he asked a child <coughs> that went out of a cheder, a Jewish child, what did you study today? So he told him from the Cheskel, the prophet, that I, I, God, is going to revenge the, from Edom, from the children of Edom, by the hands, I'm going to have my revenge on them by the hand of the Israelites. So he said, God wants me to ruin the temple, and then he's going to revenge, the revenge will be, he will clean his hands on me? No. So he left the army, and he became Jewish, he converted to Judaism, and one of his descendants is Rabbi Meir Balanes, from him came Rabbi Meir Balanes. Now, you know why God chose that this place to be in Jerusalem, Hara Moria, to be the place, shh, to be the place where the temple will be built? Dear women, it says, the Ben Ishchai says, there was a story about two brothers, that their father passed away and left two fields for both of them. And one of them succeeded very much. He had a lot of money from, from the field, but he did not have any children. They both got married, but he, got, he did not have children. And the other one, he had a lot of children, but he did not see any fruits in his field. So one night, the poor, the poor brother that has a lot of children was thinking to himself, why, my brother is, I'm so sorry for him, he doesn't have children at all. How can I make him happy? He said, well, he doesn't have children, but maybe I will give him wealth. I will take part of the field that anyway doesn't have a lot of crops, but I will pay, pay, take part of the crops and give it to my brother. So this is what he did. At night, he went and put it in his father, in his uh, brother's crop. 
But meanwhile, the rich brother said, wow, I have so much money and I don't have a lot of children. I should give part of it to my, my brother. He has a lot of children to feed, a lot of mouths. I have to have pity on him. So he took from his crops and he gave it to his brother, the poor. At night, both of them are doing the same thing. In the morning, they can see that nothing is missing. How come? They, they gave, they knew each one of them separately, knew that they gave each other and nothing is missing. It continued for a few weeks. Then, then they thought to themselves, we need to see what's going on. How come nothing is missing? So at night, the poor brother thought himself, and at the parallel to him, the rich brother thought himself, I have to bring my, give to my brother and then wait and see what happens. How come nothing is missing? So both of them are taking part of the crops at the same time. Look how God does it. At the same time, and they meet each other at the middle of the way. And when they saw that, they hugged each other and God said, if such love is over there, look, it's written like, where did I, in al kol pshayim techaseava, over all of the sins, love covers, love has, this is the merit, if we love each other, even if we sin, God says, I, I, I rule my world measure for measure, which means if you love each other, which is very easy to love each other, dear women, if you love each other unconditionally, then God says, I will love you back the same way, and I will bring Mashiach me immediately. So God says, a place that there's such love, such love that you can see over there, this is the place that the temple should be built. Now, dear women, we are going to the place, dear women, that I'm taking you to the scene in Jerusalem. And there's Titus, the wicked. Titus was one of the Roman generals. He was uh, with a siege over Jerusalem, over the temple. And it says over there, on th th those were the times that Titus was there. I would like to give you a story of a woman that is written in Me'am Loez. And it's written in the Midrash in Agmara, and I'm going to give you, and I want you to pay attention. It says about a woman that her name was Miriam, and she had one son. Now, she can, meanwhile, I'll just give you something that you'll know, a part of the story. Uh, the Kohanim, it's, it says that Amitai Kohen, the priest, Amitai the priest, he saw a few, there were a few bullies in the, uh, in, among the children of Israel, and he called them in order that they will help him to fight uh, Titus. But they were not so good people. So they were in the city. Miriam and her, she was a very rich woman and she came to Jerusalem. When she went into Jerusalem, they took all of the money from her, those bullies. They took the money and everything that she had. They said it's part of, the, they own it now. And the, and the siege was very hard on the city of Jerusalem. It came to a situation that they didn't have anything to eat. They couldn't buy anything with money. They didn't have anything. And it says about Miriam, she had only one son. She felt so hungry. Even in her stomach, she couldn't, you know, she couldn't even lisbol it. Tolerate it. She couldn't tolerate the, hung, the hunger. Her pitiness became a cruelness. She became cruel. To whom she became cruel? To her own son. Listen. When she heard her son crying, she cannot find anything, even you know, Peru, even a small a piece of bread she cannot find. She tells her son, What shall I do to you, my son? What shall I give you? I don't have anything to give you. Hashem, which means God is angry all around the city of Jerusalem, she says. And everywhere there's hunger and people are dying on the streets and people do not have even the strength to bury them. They are staying on the streets. It says... Um, and all the enemies are standing around Jerusalem. Which means even the Jewish people inside that were bullies are behaving not nicely towards us. 
והנה שריפה בתוך העיר, והנה מפולת, והרעב כבד. ואין לידי, לאל ידי לאכילך, ש- says I don't have even food to give you. ואתה בני עממות ברעב, למי אספך? ש- says if I will die, who shall I leave you to? What shall I do with you? If I will die, she says. ואתה קטן, and you are small, you are small child. ואני הייתי מייחלת עליך, אשר תגדל ותכלכל את שיבתי. And I was praying to Hashem that will give me a son, that when I will grow old, you will be one that will support me, she says. And you will one that will feed me, she says. And you are still small, he says. And you will give me water, and you will dress me up if I need. וביום אותי בכבוד והוט תקווני, and when the, I will pass away, you are going to bury me, she says. וגם לו היית לפניי מת, לפניי בטובי, which means even if I, you will die before me, she says, yeah, I would bury you with a lot of honor, she says. I will do everything that I need to do for you, she says. לעשות לבן, לבן ש, that my womb brought to this world. ואתה בני, she says, and now my son, מחמד עיניי, you know, the, the pre- precious of my eyes, she says, הנך נחשב כמת, you are considered as a dead person, he, she says, כי אין לי מזון לאחיך, she says, I don't have any food to give you, La, she says, והרעב כבד, and the hunger is so harsh, והאויבים גוברים מבית ומבחוץ, and we have enemies from inside and from outside. ואם תמות כאשר מתי הרעב, and if you will die now, nobody can even bury us, they don't have the strength to bury us. ולבכן אמרתי, says, so I told to myself, she says, אבחרה לך קבר, I will choose you a grave, but the grave that I'm going to choose you will be in my belly, in my stomach, she says. פן תמות ויאכלו לך כלבים בחוצות, because if you will die, the dogs will eat you, there's no someone to bury you. ואני לך לקבר, I will be your grave, she says. ואתה תהיה לי למזון ומחיה, and you are going to be my food, and I, I can live by you, she says. ותחת אשר היה חוב עליך לכבדנו ולכלכלנו, and instead of you having the burden to respect me and to do everything for me, she says, if you would have lived, she says, you will feed me and this is how I can live. And you will לכלכל אותי, and you will give me what I need so I can continue to live, and this will be your respect for me, she says. בטרם יאכלך, before you are going to pass away too, anyway you are considered dead, she said. וקולג, and your body will rot, and the, the smell will be all, all over. And meanwhile, you are going to be my food, and you are going to be my life, because you are going to go back, I will be, you are going, I'm going to be your grave in my belly, she says. And then she said, ושלם לאמך את אשר נתן, you are going to this way, you are going to pay me what I gave you, I gave you life, you are going to pay me with your life. כי ממנה יצאת, because you came out of me, she says, ושמה תבוא, and you are going to go back to me. ואביאך על חדר אשר בו נובחה נשמת חיים באפך, and I will bring you to the place where God gave you your soul, you know, in the womb of his mother, in the belly of his mother. כי אתה הוא בני יחידי מחמד עיני, because you are my only son, מחמד my precious one, my eyes, she says. אשר אהבתיך כל מימיי בכל מאודי, she says, because I loved you all of my days very much. והיית עושה לאמך לכלכלה, and everything that I wanted you did. וכאן דיאל, and I don't want you to be in the hands of the פריצים, the bullies and the children of Israel, of the children of Israel, that took all of everything that I had to support you. בני, שמע בקול אמך, she says, my son, listen to your mother. וסעדת את נפשי, and be a meal for me, ותמכת את חיי, and, I, and you will be part of my life, ויהיה לי למחיה ולמזון. And she says, and you will be my food and my, my nourishment. And she says, ואתה לך לקץ הנתון לך על ידי תהיה נשמתך בגן עדן. And because of that you will go to paradise, your soul will go to paradise. ויהי כדברה אל בנה כדברים האלה, ותיקח את הילד בידה, ותפן אחור, ותמיתהו במאכלת, ותוותרהו, which means when she spoke this to her son, she took him in her hands, she moved her face from him, she took the knife and she started to cut her son with her own hands. ופניה לאחור, and she's not looking, ועיניה לא ראו את נבלת הילד, the body of the son, and she took him and then she roasted him. And the smell started to go. 
And people said, how come, where is the smell of meat, fresh meat? We have to know where the smell is, dear women. So she t they came, they went after the smell and they came to her. And it says that she put a, a table for them. And they said, how dare you eat without giving us food? And she said, here, please come and eat the food. And she says, you see, this food is my son. Everything was taken away from me. This is my son. And the children of Israel took this story and they went out to Titus. And they told him that this and what is, what is happening outside, inside the city of Jerusalem. That a woman took her son and killed him and cut him and they, she was eating it because there was... This means that she got crazy. It's Mama she, she became uh, insane. So dear women, it says even over here, it says, They told Titus what she did. Even this cruel person was crying. Even he felt that it was very bad in his eyes. You know how this Titus that uh, helped, you know what he did? He burned the temple of Jerusalem. He burned the temple. And then before he burned, he, take, he took a book of Torah. He opened it in Kodesh HaKodeshim, in the holiest of holiest. And he put a Ishazola. Um, you know, he took a woman, not a good woman, and he did what intimate relationship on the book of Torah in the holiest of holiest. And then he went on a ship, dear women. And on the ship, there were, when he was on the ship, the sea had waves. So he said, oh, the God of the children of Israel only can fight in the water because he killed the, the army of Egypt in the water, the army of Sisra in the water. So he doesn't have strength only in the water. Let's see if he's going to fight me, he says. I'm the strongest of all because I ruined the temple. So God, there was a bad call, a voice from heaven that says, Rasha ben Rasha ben Rasha, which means you are wicked, the son of Rashaim, of wicked people, of Esav. Dear women, he told him, he told him, then the bad call said, we, I'm go, I have a small, a small insect, a Yetush. Yetush is a low fly, it flies a zvum, nachon? Ani shakhti ta shem shele. Ma? Lo, 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 Yetush. Kalia Yetush. A fly, a mosquito. I said, a mosquito will teach you a lesson. I want you to know that a mosquito went into his nostrils, into his nose, and went straight to his brain. For seven years, the mosquito was eating everything in his brain. You know, he drinks blood from, from his seven years. Once he was walking next to a blacksmith, and the blacksmith was with his hammer, was kicking with his hammer. So the, he stood next to the blacksmith and he saw that, why, because all the time the, um, the mosquito was making s sounds. You know it's so hard to hear sounds in your head and to stay uh, sane. It's very hard. You become insane from the, the hear. If you hear noises in your ears, you can be, become insane. So it's so hard every day, 24 hours a day, the mosquito was making noises in his head. Dear women, so when the mosquito heard the blacksmith, he stopped. So he said, now I know how to cure myself, I will take a blacksmith next to me. So every time he took a black, during the day, the blacksmith will come. If it was a guy, if it was a non-Jewish blacksmith, he used to pay him. But if it was a Jewish blacksmith, they said, your payment is seeing your enemy suffering like this. He did not pay him, but he told me, your payment is seeing me suffering, God forbid, is seeing him suffer. So it says that after he passed away, it took 30 days that the blacksmith, because then the mosquito, after he got used to the hammer sounds, he continued to make noises. Titus died, and when he died, they made a, a surgery in his brain. They opened his brain, and they saw that the mosquito was the, the, the length and the size of a pigeon. It was like a size of a pigeon in his head. Tito said that he, wanted, that he wanted them to burn him. They burned his body and he said, I want you to throw it everywhere in the world so the God of the Israelites will not find me and judge me. 
He was afraid of God. Listen, that he understood that you have to be afraid only from the, the God of the Israelites, which is the God of all the human beings and everything that is in this world. <laughs> no, it's not a tshuva, but he, he, it's not a tshuva. Dear women, another thing, shh, I wanted... Child. She died out of the, uh, She died, and Titus continued. I won't continue the story. Titus continued with the siege until the walls of the sish, until until they went into the temple and they burned the temple. I would like to tell you, dear women. So what is our? This is things are that happened nine thousand um, one thousand nine hundred and forty-four years ago. But dear women, we had in nineteen sixty-seven. The war, the six day war, dear women, shh. <clears throat> we had the six day war. I want you to pay a few more minutes, please pay attention. Okay? Okay, <laughs> I would like to give you a sense of the six day war. Shh. Please, please be quiet because it's very important that you will understand what I'm saying. It says this, we are now, this is what was um, announced on the radio during the Six Day War. And you remember during the Six Day War, we, God helped us to conquer the old city of Jerusalem. Before that, there was a wall, which was the border between Jordan and the, the new city of Jerusalem. The old city was in the hands of Jordans, of Jordan. And on the wall, there were Jordan um, soldiers walking on the wall, dear women, with guns and with black uh, kafiot, with red kafiot on their heads, shooting anybody that tried to go in. And dear women, I would like to tell you now what was heard on the radio. So it says, Sharayot, <coughs> the children of Israel, God help them to be outside the gate, uh, the, the lion gates. Uh, you know, there are gates around Jerusalem. One of them is called Sharayot, the gate of the lions. So it says, Echad Meshivat Shara Shel Rushalayim. This is one of the, the Sharim. And it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, Kafchet Biyar, the day, it's 28th of Biyar, the day that the old city was conquered. 1967. Tafshin Chaf Zain, dear women, it's 5,727. It says that there was a. a, a, a a tank was in front of the gate, the lion gates, and it was bombing the gate, dear women. Those are the para, paratroops. Those are, this was the group of the paratroops that were coming inside the city of Jerusalem. Do, um, excuse me, in a few minutes we'll do that. Uh, no, I want you to wait, wait. Wait, a few minutes. This is after 55 hours, two, more, more than two days, that the soldiers are fighting without sleep. And they're seeing their friends dying around them and they're continuing towards the old city, dear women. The 55 hours, it says, um, they're almost at the end. And, and uh, lines of soldiers that were sweating and very tired, they were coming inside the city. Their general was Motagur, and, they, and he told them, they told, he told them to be lions. And this is a big day to the Jewish people because now if we conquer, with God's help, we conquer the old city. Jerusalem is for ours forever. This was the word of Motagur then. He said to them, this is part of his um, lecture that he gave him before they went oh, into Shararayot Ken. No, you don't have to be religious in order to understand that the Ju we have a connection, a spiritual connection to Jerusalem. So listen, he tells them, it's historia kivnat neadvarim, which means God saw that the things were that the old city of the Jerusalem would be conquered by the children of Israel. 
It says that the Tzanchanim, the uh, paratroops, were standing in the gates of the old city. That they were dreaming about her for a long time, dear women. And then it says, listen very, those are the soldiers themselves, what they wrote and said at that time. One of the soldiers says, Ani Once they went through the gate, the gate of lions, they were searching for the cotton. They didn't even have, they didn't even know how it looks like. So they were searching for the cotton. Those are 18, 19 year old soldiers. We were running towards it. We didn't have even breath. We're going through Harabait and we don't really know what we're even looking for. We're looking for a big wall of, of stone. We are shouting to each other, Kadima, Kadima, forward, forward. We're going through Sharam, the gate of Mugrabim, it says. We're we just uh, rushing, can rushing towards it. And uh, immediately we stopped, you know, in, at the middle of, we were all shocked. Halumei Ram, like a thunder was there. We were all shocked. In front of us, we saw for the first time the Kotel, the Western Wall. Listen, those, listen what they are saying. Le'at, le'at, he says, slowly, slowly, I started coming near the Western Wall, near the Kotel. He says, I came to it. It karafti elav. I, I felt I was a messenger. Shel Abba, ve Saba, ve Abba shel Saba. I was a messenger of my father, my grandfather, my great great grandfather. He says, ve shel kol adorot and all the generations that are in exile. Shel ozachulekach that did not have the merit to see the Western Wall. Ve lachen shel chul and that's why God gave me the merit to be their messenger. He says, Mishu Amar Sham Shechianu v'Kimanu v'Giyanu l'Zman Azeh. So somebody says from the soldiers, the blessing of Sheikh Yanu. I couldn't even say Amen, he says. I could just put my hands, he says, on the wall, on, on the stones, he says. And the tears just went from my eyes, he says. And I was crying like I was a baby. I was crying for all of the children of Israel that I have a merit to ch touch the western wall, the external western wall of the temple, he says. Dma'ot shel tikva, tears of hope, betfilot, and prayers. And he says, v'nigunei chasidim, and the songs of chasidim, and even the, 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 the dancing of Jews. And the, he says, I put my face, and all of us, he says, put our face on the wall, and our tears were burning the stones of the western wall. And he says, Ma, ma bitu, it's, he continues, Ma bitu admot, what, what kind of expression was for, the, for those tears? He says, Simtaot sarot, mevot mezoamim, zevel yad pitcha chaniot osgot. He says, everything, the Jordans put, you know, trash, and everything was on the way to that. He, he says, you, ne you never saw a soldier cry like you saw the soldiers crying. He says there was an announcement, Harabait Beyadenu. It means that we have it, Harabait. It's in our hands. God gave it back to us. And Motagur then said, This Jerusalem, the old city, is ours forever because this was promised by Hashem. It's not us to give away. It's not ours to give away. Everything is God's. Every, all the world belongs to Hashem. And the old city of Jerusalem is alachat kama v'chama shel Hashem. Furthermore of Hashem's, because uh, above the, the place where the, 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 uh, the temple was built, there is the third temple in heaven. This is a gate straight to Hashem. Why do you think everybody is fighting? They don't even know the reason they're fighting for it. If the non-Jewish people would have known that only the temple atones them, that they will have water and everything, and they will have peace through the years, through all, all, all over the world, by us sacrificing for them the Musaf of Sukkot, the Musaf of Sukkot, we sacrifice 70 uh, uh, Parim, we sacrifice them against 70 nations in order that they will be atoned 
but then no, no, truly nobody understands the truth. Everybody sees the lie, not the truth beyond the lie. Because this is the last war. We are standing on the days of Mashiach. We are mamash dorchim. We are standing on it. And this Bezrat Hashem will bring Mashiach b'merabi amen. Amen. I would like to tell you, dear women, there's, a, there's something that they wrote about the paratroopers, and I want you to listen to it. Hakotel azeh shamar bet filot. This western wall, a kotel. When I say kotel, it's the western wall. It shamar listened to a lot of prayers. This wall, so Western wall, this cotton saw that a lot of uh, walls falling down. This, uh, this Western wall, this cotton felt women are weeping over their dead. And also um, letters that are put inside those stones of the cotton in order to pray and ask for blessing. This cotton saw Rabbi Uda Levi falling in front of him. Caesars come up and fall down and vanish. But this cotton did not see paratroopers cry. He saw them, the cotton saw them when they were tired and they, were, they didn't have even the strength. And they were whispering, And they are fighting like a thunder. And with all the spirit. And they, they, they remember those 2,000 years that we are still in exile and the third temple is not built. We didn't even have the kotel to cry in front of it. And they remember, and now they are standing in front of it, and they are breathing a deep breath. And now they are looking at it with pain and with happiness. But and with sweetness, and their tears are falling down, and they're looking at it, they cannot believe it. They are looking embarrassed at each other. How does it happen that paratroopers cry? How does it happen that they look very excited and on this wall? And from crying they are going to singing. Maybe it's because those young soldiers, 18, 19 years old, are carrying on themselves 2,000 years of exile of the Jewish people. Dear women, I want to tell you this is the time to remember that the city of Jerusalem belongs to us. The land of Jerusalem, God gave it to the Jewish people. We have to cry over the ruining of the temple and say thank you to Hashem for everything that He did for us. And we have to ask for Mashiach now. I would like to bless all of you, Bezrat Hashem. Shagia Mashiach, it can be made by Amen. Amen. Shagia Mevasar Eliyahu, Naviliyahu, Tishbiliyahu, Gli Maron, Mashiach, and David Eliyahu, Nabi Zachulato. God bless you. Amen. Amen.